Welcome to the June 24th meeting of the Murfreesboro City Council. Uh, Council Member Bill Shacklett has our prayer and our pledge. Thank you, Mayor. If you'll join me in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day and for the blessings that you've given us for the country, for the state, for this community that we live in. Lord, we pray your blessings on all those that labor to uh, provide services for our community. We pray for our first responders, dear Lord, of our police and fire personnel that uh, keep us safe and protect us. Lord, thank you for all those that labor to provide services in our community. Lord, we pray tonight that you'd give us uh, discernment as we make decisions for the betterment of our community. Uh, make our hearts right, help our minds think clearly, and may we do that which would honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we have uh, a STARS Award tonight. Ms. Russell. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. As you know, the purpose of the STARS Award is to recognize and reward those who go above and beyond their normal duties in providing outstanding customer service. Captain Tim Lampett nominated Firefighter Andrew Carter for the following act of service. On May 4th, 2021, Firefighter Carter went above and beyond to save a one-year-old girl's life. Carter returned to Station 9 from Station 4 while Engine 9 was on call. Shortly after arriving at Station 9, a man pulled up to the station with a one-year-old child having trouble breathing. While Carter was alone and without medical supplies, he jumped into action and began performing life-saving intervention measures. Carter thought quickly and outside the box to find supplies in the station to save the baby's life. Carter kept the child alive until another engine and paramedics arrived on the scene to assist. Carter handled himself with poise and confidence during a time of stress. He managed both the child and the upset family member, all while keeping dispatch abreast of the situation. Thank you, Carter, for your outstanding performance while under pressure and trying circumstances. probably could just adjourn the meeting right now. <laughs> um, all right, we'll move to the consent agenda. You have 15 items on your consent agenda. Is there anything that needs to be added or removed? There aren't any, I'll move for approval. Second. Motion is second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. You have the minutes of the uh, April 26th meeting uh, through the June the 9th meeting. Any additions or deletions to the minutes? If they're all around, I'll make a motion we approve as presented. A second. Motion is second. Ms. Wright, please call the rule. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mr. McFarland. Aye. In old business on second reading, you have ordinance 21018. This is revisions to chapter four. Chapter four of alcoholic beverages. This is second and final reading. Move for approval. Second. Motion is second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. We'll move to new business. Um, you have ordinance 21005 and resolution 21R09 to amend the city code to permit consumption of alcohol on airport property. Mr. Gerke. 
Hello, Mayor, members of the City Council. As you know, we're uh, just now opening up the new terminal, and in there is the business center that has uh, some wonderful space for meetings and classrooms, events, and social events. And as we prepare to use that facility, uh, one of the items that we needed to address was the uh, ability to use and, and uh, provide uh, use for that space and alcohol in that area. Uh, we use the uh, template that was provided by our Parks and Recreation and guidance by our legal department to move forward. The Airport Commission has approved the rules and regulations for that. And uh, so before you is the, uh, is the ordinance and all that for your consideration. <clears throat> Any questions? No questions. Move for approval. A second. Motion a second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shackley. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. That was ordinance 21005. We now need uh, to vote on resolution 21R09. Move for approval. Second. A motion is second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. We'll move to Ordinance 20.007 to amend the city code to reflect UED merger with streets. Kane, Mr. Adams. How are you doing, sir? Good. Uh, Mayor, City Council, thanks for uh, having me tonight. I'm coming before you to uh, discuss the changes and seek your approval for the changes of the tree management ordinance uh, to better align it with the merger of UED and street. Uh, <clears throat> we need to change the verbiage to align with the title and structure over there. And it's also dissolving the UED mentioned from there and also dissolving two inactive boards. Um, I think we talked about the way that the board is, uh, excuse me, the uh, there's an appeal process that goes along with this and it's gonna be shifted to the BZA if there's any appeal on staff actions and uh, we're requesting approval on these changes and I'll be able to answer any questions if you need me. All right. <clears throat> any questions for Mr. Adams? One question. The yes. agenda says ordinance 2007. Is yeah. that just a typo? Says 21. Yeah, one says 21 and one says 20. Oh, on the agenda. Oh, 19. Gotcha. It should be 21 07. Okay. That's what the actual That's what the actual ordinance says is 2107. Okay, so we'll consider on first reading <coughs> ordinance 21007. Move for approval. Second. Motion is second. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, King. All right, we'll move to resolution 21R23, uh, fiscal year 21, Murfreesboro City Schools budget. This is the ninth amendment. Hi, good evening. City Schools comes before you tonight with our final resolution and budget amendment series for FY21. Three budget amendments for a new grant that we received in the amount of $100,000 for teacher stipends, transfer of indirect costs from one of our federal funds, and an and to recognize some education debt service. Okay, any questions on this amendment? Move for approval. Second. Motion is second. Ms. Wright, please call the rule. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. We'll move to item 21, resolution 21R24, fiscal year 22, Murfreesboro City Schools budget. This is the First Amendment. This is our First Amendment, yes. We have two new grants, and one is the Epidemiology Laboratory Capacity Grant, otherwise known as the ELC or Nursing Grant, and that's just over just under $2.4 million to cover the cost of nursing salaries, COVID testing, and some minor construction projects in order to facilitate COVID testing at our schools. <clears throat> the second one is the 21st Century Grant that's used for tutoring for about 500 students, and this is these are both new grants for next year. A quick question: Are we? Are you guys pretty certain that the the um, you know what you use the money for is going to be for sure? This will be covered, you know, because I know they've been changing a lot of stuff we're dealing with. 
yes. even even as late as today. Yes, even as late as today, and it is it is our confidence that we will be using this money as approved by the state. All right. And I'll move for approval. Second. second. Motion is second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalant. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Thank you. All right. We'll move to land use matters. We have the rezoning of 17.25 acres located along the north side of Asher's Fork Drive. Mr. Blomley. Thank you, Mayor McFarland, and good evening, Mayor McFarland and members of council. Um, our first public hearing tonight is a rezoning request along the north side of Asher's Fork Drive. It's for 17.25 acres. It's the area um, colored in purple on the map before you. It's currently zoned commercial fringe. Um, this, was, this has been zoned commercial fringe for about the past four years or so uh, when the uh, weight property was annexed into the city and zoned. Um, the balance of the property is zoned RSA type one, which is a single family residential zoning classification. Um, uh, Mr. Chip Lloyd is in the process of developing a subdivision on the property to the south of Asher's Fort Drive called Waits Creek Crossing. Uh, Waits Creek Crossing is a mixture of single family detached homes and single family zero lot line homes. Um, the property that is in purple, that's zoned CF, <clears throat> the northern border of it is kind of, uh, or the northern border of the purple shaded property is kind of a jagged line. That's because that represents Spence Creek. Spence Creek forms the northern border of the requested area. And uh, Mr. Lloyd um, brought this to us today saying that, or brought this to us to, uh, earlier this year saying that, that the, uh, the viability of this property to develop as commercial because of the location of Spence Creek through there and the fact that a bridge would have to be built over Spence Creek. Also because of the depth of that CF zoned property, uh, uh, the, the frontage along New Salem Highway is really more viable as commercial property than the, uh, than the, the back portion. And because of the uh, difficulty in, in developing that with commercial with Spence Creek um, uh, being located, um, there along its northern boundary, Mr. Lloyd approached us about um, rezoning options to continue his subdivision north of Asher's Fork Drive. Um, it was at staff's suggestion that he pursued uh, the RS6 zoning classification, which will enable slightly larger single family detached lots than what he's building uh, to the south. RS6, of course, requires 6,000 square foot uh, minimum lot sizes, all single family detached product. Um, as I mentioned, it's 17.25 acres. Um, because of the location of Spence Creek, you will not be able to completely maximize that property because of the floodplain and floodway located on that property. But he submitted just for, um, just for uh, informational purposes a potential layout of the uh, subdivision along the north side of Asher's Fort Drive. It shows approximately 43 single family lots of course, that may fluctuate once he and his engineering firm get in and do um, additional, additional design work. But that just gives you a representation of, of what could be developed on that property if it were zoned RS6. The Murfreesboro Future Land Use Map, uh, Murfreesboro 2035 Future Land Use Map, does identify the subject property as neighborhood commercial um, uh, for, for its development as neighborhood commercial. I think that's probably more of a function of the way it was zoned, utilizing the existing zoning of commercial fringe to inform the, the uh, future land use map. But uh, we as staff feel that, that uh, this deviation from the future land use map is, is warranted um, due to the, the uh, limitations on the property uh, because of Spence Creek. Planning Commission conducted a public hearing on this matter on May the 5th and voted to recommend its approval. Uh, Mr. Chip Lloyd and Mr. Clyde Roundtree are in the are in attendance. If you have any questions for them as the as the developers of the property, um, I'll be happy to answer any questions before or after the public hearing. Any questions for Mr. Blomley? Okay. Any questions for the applicant? All right, we'll need to hold a public hearing. Uh, anyone wishing to speak for or against, if you would come to the uh, podium, 
You'll have three minutes as an individual, five minutes if you're representing a group. If you'll keep all your questions directed towards the council, we'll get those addressed at the end of the public hearing. If you would state your name and address when you come to the podium, that would be appreciated. Anyone wishing to speak for or against, please come to the podium. All right, seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. We'll consider on first reading ordinance 21OZ15. <clears throat> Move for approval. Second. Motion and a second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. All right, we'll move to item 23. This is a rezoning request for approximately 78 acres located along Medical Center Parkway, Robert Rose Drive, Wilkinson Pike, and Willow Oak Trail. Mr. Blomley. Thank you, Mayor McFarland. Um, this is for the uh, rezoning for the Clary Park. Clary Park, PUD. I think I've been corrected. I've called it Clara Park um, quite a number of times, and so I've been told that I need to pronounce it correctly by Miss Green over there. Clary Park, PUD. Um, it's also commercial highway zoning identified in the red color. The PUD is in the blue color. This should look familiar to you all because the City Council conducted a public hearing on this back in. Um, late October of last year and then uh, voted to deny the request. Um, the applicants went back to the drawing board, um, significantly altered their plan, significantly reduced the number of units and worked with staff on their plan to address the concerns. Um, consequently, it went before our planning commission on May the 5th and then uh, the planning commission voted to recommend approval. Um, I'll go over some numbers with you very quickly. Uh, I know that Mr. Taylor has a <coughs> lengthy PowerPoint presentation that, uh, that he'll be making to you. Uh, so the 2020 Clara Park plan, and I'll zoom in here. Um, so it, it included a total of 600 apartment units. 290 townhome units and zero single family detached units for a total of 890 overall units. The 2021 original Clara Park plan that went before Planning Commission on May the 5th included 488 apartment units, 182 townhome units, and 38 single family detached units. Um, one of the main uh, changes to the plan was the decrease in the number of apartment units in the number of townhome units and the addition of single family detached units. So we went down from a total number of dwelling units from of 890 to 708 at the planning commission meeting on May the 5th the planning commission approved it with the re with further reductions and uh, Mr. Taylor will go over the specifics of where those reductions have occurred in a moment, but the total number of dwelling units now is at 620. So from last year's plan, from last fall's plan, we were at 890 units, and now we are at 620 units, a reduction of 270 dwelling units, uh, including um, half of the apartment units being taken out. So we were at 600 apartment units, and now 300 apartment units are proposed. The number of townhome units is down to 282 and keeping the um, 38 um, single family detached units. So you can tell the difference between what went to the Planning Commission on May the 5th and what the Planning Commission conditioned approval on. So there was a multifamily area that was changed to single family attached or townhomes. So the 2021 Clara Park plan, the original one, um, there is a further decrease in multifamily, but an increase in townhomes um, to make up for the further decrease in multifamily. So I hope I haven't thrown too many, too many numbers at you. Um, but the Planning Commission um, took this back up again on May the 19th and confirmed that, that the changes that were made to the plan after the May 5th meeting uh, were in keeping with the intent of the Planning Commission's approval. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to ask Mr. Taylor to come up here and um, give a presentation. Um, I'll also mention that if you have specific questions about the plan, we do have Ms. Uh, Margaret Ann Green here who has put in a substantial amount of work on this, on this <clears throat> plan with working with the applicants. 
And if you have uh, questions after Mr. Taylor's presentation regarding uh, road improvements or drainage concerns, um, city engineer, uh, Ms. Michelle Emerson is present uh, and available to answer any questions regarding those items. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, Matt Taylor of SCC. Um, appreciate the time here tonight, Mayor and Council. I'm accompanied by Mr. Walt O'Shea from the Heinz Company, the applicant on the project, as well as Mr. Kevin Gunther from Reagan Smith, did most of the land planning on the project, and then Mr. Tommy Smith representing the landowner. So as Mr. Blomley said, we're here tonight to represent and present the Clary Park PUD, which I think each of you are very familiar with since Matthew introduced um, and reminded you of the application from last year. <clears throat> so we've spent the last seven to eight months making very significant changes to the plan. The largest and most impactful of those, I think, is probably the reduction in the multifamily count. We reduced that uh, count from by 50% from the previous proposal of 600 down to 300. We furthermore reduced the amount of single family attached. Um, we originally proposed 290. This plan has 182 with the possibility of up to 282. And then one thing we're very excited about, we think you will be too, is the introduction of the single family detached homes. We've introduced and proposed a total of 38 of those. Of course, uh, with the reduction of density, uh, we have also cut our traffic impact. Depending on whether you're talking about an AM or a PM peak time, we've cut that density or that traffic generation by 10 to 20%. Uh, we have worked very closely with staff on the single family attached architecture. That was a very uh, lengthy conversation over multiple meetings last time. And so we think we have come to a very quality project, a very quality product that we'll all be proud of. Uh, we think that you'll agree with that. And then one of the large sticking points last time was the lack of the berm that was supposed to have been built. And so we have made very significant progress. The grading is there, the landscaping has been installed, and they are finishing the irrigation, which will let them install the side. So we think that will be completed up entirely within the next few days. And then, of course, we've worked closely with staff on traffic. Uh, we have not taken away any of our previous traffic commitments. We've actually added an additional two turn lanes that we will construct as early as this fall. And then we work closely with staff on drainage uh, to help uh, protect Wilkinson Pike in the vicinity of our project and actually install some of the drainage improvements that the city would have done with the Wilkinson Pike widening. So the land itself is about 78 acres. It's probably the last large piece along Medical Center Parkway. It generally drains away from Medical Center Parkway, so from the south to the north and to the east. It is currently zoned MU, as Mr. Blomley said, <coughs> which is consistent with the surrounding land uses and zonings and consistent with the future land use map. Um, our re reason for the request is to allow the single family attached and detached, which are not currently allowed by right inside the MU zoning district. And along with a few minor exceptions for setbacks, which we think allows for a better quality product design here. As I mentioned, we have uh, requested a PUD zoning as well as a CH zoning. It's just under 78 acres in size. We have presented two options in the book. Both of those are in there, spelling out exactly what those options are and the differences. I'll go over those in a minute. Of course, everything that we're doing here will have underground utilities. As I mentioned previously, it's a mixture of detached, attached, and multifamily, and we're still um, maintaining a high level of commercial uses here. Of course, all of this will be maintained and oversawn by a HOA with a master architect, just like the Avenue. Uh, so we like that model over there. We've actually already interviewed several firms. We have not made a final selection there, but we've got some very good quality candidates that are familiar with the Gateway and Murfreesboro standards. So we think you'll be happy with that selection when it's ultimately made. Uh, we're also continuing to maintain the installation of street trees, decorative street lights, just like the rest of Medical Center and the Gateway. We will, continuous to, we will continue to uh, build the continuous turn lane along Medical Center Parkway like the other projects. Uh, all that's typical to the developments in the Gateway, 
Uh, we're setting ourselves apart in that we have set very firm time frames on those uh, installations, not only by the uh, progress of the development, but hard calendar dates as well. And all that's outlined inside the booklet itself. And then we're not uh, requesting any additional multifamily. Today, by right, the property could build about 488 units, and we've cut that number down to 300, as Matthew, Mr. Blimley said earlier. The two options, uh, the first option, option A, is the only plan that we can build for the next three years. Uh, that includes 38 single-family detached, 182 single-family attached, and then 300 multifamily units, and then just under 38 acres commercial. That's this plan here. The only difference between this plan and the next plan I'll show you is going to be in Area 7, which is going to be in the lower right-hand corner of the plan. Under Option A, the only thing that we can build in Area 7 is commercial or office building. Uh, Hines is a very experienced office developer there um, and thinks they can go to track that. Option B, same amount of single-family detached, same amount of multifamily. Uh, we are requesting 100 additional single-family attached down in area seven and that's only if we cannot garner that office user in those first three years the single family detached we've located those in two areas first area being along wilkinson pike to respect the neighbors and the battlefield and that existing condition along wilkinson pike the other would be along the extension of willow oak both of those shown in the highlighted red areas here uh, we've uh, requested shallower setbacks in these areas to create a nice streetscape all these homes will be alley loaded. So uh, we think it'd be a very high quality product. Uh, we have set a maximum height of 35 feet or two stories, which is consistent with all of our other uh, single family heights in the city. A minimum of 1800 square feet of livable, livable area. Raised porches, which was a big item of discussion in the first application. These will be transferred um, through an HPR and um, so all the maintenance and management will be by third-party HOA company. And then setbacks are a little shallower. That's really a design element. High-quality materials, brick, stone, very limited amount of cement board siding in the accents, and the vinyl will just be in the trim and soffit areas. Uh, we really, um, when we started looking at this architecture for not only the detached but the attached homes, uh, we took our inspiration from Berry Farms over in Franklin and then added our own style or twist to that. It's much less farmhousey than the previous application and less reliance on the cement board. And so you'll see a lot of stacked porches, a lot of detail around the windows, a lot of brick. And we tried to maintain the same sort of architecture on the attached so that it is a consistent theme across the community. Uh, we have spread those attached across three separate areas, area two, six, and seven, highlighted in red here. Again, these are all alley loaded. They'll either front on a public street or on a, on a um, lawn area. Same building heights as the detached, minimum of 1,400 square feet in livable area, all alley loaded. These will have the raised porches as well and HPRs and then setbacks. And then one thing you'll notice inside the book is we have self-restricted against um, selling these to any large um, rental community developers. So all this will be developed as a for sale product. Same quality materials here as in the detached. You'll see each of these has been really designed to be five individual units instead of one big building. You'll see the stacked porches as well as a limited amount of cement board. Here's just an example of one of the wrap porch options that will be at the corners. Multifamily is just this single area of about 11 acres, 300 units. This architecture is very similar. Actually, it's identical to the previous application. I think everybody was satisfied with that. It's four-story buildings maximum. We do have some ground floor office in one of the uh, southern buildings. We have these highly amenitized, not only inside the buildings, but on the outside. <clears throat> and we have some exterior detached garages. And we have allowed for a shallower setback along Robert Rose for a better design and streetscape there. Same materials. Of course, everything here will go through a full GDO review process with the Planning Commission. 
It's an example of what that architecture will look like. See the varying roof lines, a lot of insets, good quality product. This is uh, some of the amenities. We created this grand lawn concept for the multifamily. Um, we think this will be a high activity zone. People will be drawn to this, it's where you'll create your neighbors and your friends for this development. Commercial areas are all shown in the red here. Uh, we have uh, varied uses amongst those areas. Uh, some of the intensity, we want low, lower intensity back toward Wilkinson, more highly intense along commercial high, uh, along the Medical Center Parkway. We've done the same thing with our building heights to lower those along Wilkinson Pike. Our uses started out with the CH or commercial highway allowed uses and we paired those back based on nuances or obtrusive uses such as maybe the cash advanced businesses. Again, the setbacks will vary depending on which area you're in. All that's outlined in the book. Uh, still the same high quality materials. Here's a few examples of buildings that Heinz has built. They could bring here. And we've continued that grand long concept from the multifamily into the commercial areas. I would uh, make this akin to the uh, central part of the avenue, except for more activity, grander areas. Uh, we think this is a great spot for three or four restaurants for that activity zone. The amenities, uh, we think the largest amenity here is the location and the uses around. We think that's gonna attract a lot of our buyers and residents. We want to construct some of our own, uh, starting with the seat walls to um, round out these signals and these signalized intersections. We will have two different pools in the, in the development, one of those in area two, the townhouses, the other with the apartments. And of course, on the eastern side, that will be anchored by the Grand Long concept. We'll draw people across the entire development and then in our residential areas, these will have a lot of seating areas, fire pits, walking trails. Uh, these will be some very natural, passive um, conversation areas. And then we've connected all these with a greenway type trail system. It connects not only into the Grand Lawn, it parallels Clary Lane, will go through the townhomes inside of Area 2 and eventually connect into the multi-purpose trail for Wilkinson Pike. And then we think this project rounds out the transportation network in the area. It completes Wilkinson Pike. It completes the continuous right turn lane along Medical Center Parkway. We will be installing two turn lanes along Wilkinson, one at West Park Drive, as well as Willow Oak Trail. And then of course completes both the uh, intersections and the fourth leg of the avenue intersections at Willow Oak and Honey Locust. So we did host a neighborhood meeting, had about 20 people show up. We thought the changes were received very well. Actually had a couple of people uh, request specific uses, which we uh, were already pursuing. So hopefully we can bring those to fruition. I uh, did want to point out that, you know, we have heard council's concerns, heard staff's concerns, heard the neighbor's concerns. So we think that this new plan addresses all those by limiting our heights, uh, which will respect the neighbors and the battlefield more. Um, we think that we have tried to address and lower our impact on Wilkinson Pike by getting the berm constructed like we should have three years ago, um, putting detached homes along Wilkinson Pike. Uh, we have doubly reinforced our commitment to the development standards by uh, raising the bar inside the book as well as committing to this master architect uh, review process just like what happened at the avenue. We have uh, continued to maintain our high level of traffic improvements. We've added to that even though we've decreased density and decreased trips. And then um, we have continued to work with staff to come up with drainage solutions that will protect Wilkinson Pike um, in this vicinity of the development. I'm not saying we're gonna fix everything along Wilkinson Pike. I don't think any one project can do that, but we're not gonna exacerbate and we're trying to help where we can. And the, I think the biggest change obviously is the density. Went from almost 900 units down to just over 600. It could be as low as about 520 units at the end of the day. So I'll be happy to answer any questions now or after the hearing that you might have. What about, I'm sorry, ma'am. No, Ms. Skills Harris. Um, I know you're gonna build these in phases. Yes, ma'am. What phase are you gonna probably start with? 
So we will start with some of the commercial along Medical Center Parkway, and then we would start with um, a mixture of single family detached and attached coming off the Wilkinson Pike side. Uh, the first thing you'll see activity wise out there will be the construction of the turn lanes on Wilkinson Pike. The city is actually scheduled to surface, re, uh, resurface Wilkinson Pike this fall. And so we're trying to get ahead of that with our construction. No reason for y'all to spend the money and then us tear it right back up. So you'll see that even before you see anything else on site going on. When do you think the entire project, how long would that take you think, roughly? Uh, so it really depends on probably the absorption of the um, commercial that you know you've seen the rest of medical center that that can take some time we think that most of our infrastructure will be completed within the next <laughs> three to five years as far as roadway goes um, the buildings themselves we could have some out parcels that sit out there for a little longer obviously we want that to tick off as quick as possible thank you Mr. Taylor, what was the, uh, under the original MU zoning, the 70 acres, what was the count that could go on the property, the density? That you could, we could have done 488 um, apartments previously. And so we've cut that to 300 under this plan. Okay. Mr. Taylor, can I ask a clarifying question? Yes, sir. You said that the, these units wouldn't be able to be sold to corporate renters. That's just you guys, secondary owners would be able to, correct? So if if a if a individual owner wants to rent that or sell it to somebody, they absolutely they could. But we're not we're not going to go sell to, for instance, an American Homes for Rent that's coming in to develop it to rent out the entire development. So, but, but a secondary owner could sell to American. They homes. could if they wanted to. We're yes, sir. <clears throat> All right. We need to hold a public hearing. Uh, anyone wishing to speak? for or against this 78 acre rezoning request, uh, please come to the podium. All right, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and we'll now consider on first reading ordinance 21OZ16. I move for approval. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. All right, we'll now move to rescheduling public hearing for zoning ordinance amendments. Mr. Blomley. Thank you, Mayor McFarland. We did have a, another public hearing scheduled for tonight, and it was actually advertised. It was for a zoning ordinance amendment, kind of cleaning up some language with regards to the RSA zone, the RS6 zone, townhomes. Um, in May, the governor signed into law a bill that requires um, any kind of ordinance dealing with exterior building materials in a very specific way. And so we met with the legal department and found out that there were some things that we needed to do to meet the, the, um, the letter of the law with respect to the new, the new law. So, uh, we, so obviously we're not conducting that public hearing tonight, but we need to reschedule it been working with Mr. Tucker and his staff on making sure that we cross all of our T's and dot all of our I's. And so we would request that you uh, reschedule this public hearing. And it's actually, we have to separate out the portions that deal with exterior materials into a separate ordinance. So it will actually be two public hearings. Um, and we would recommend either July 29th or August the 5th for um, that public hearing date or public hearing date for both public hearings that will be scheduled. You only have the first one on the 29th and the second one on the 5th? No, we would prefer them to go all on one night. Okay. Just the, the, the 29th and the 5th are just two, two different options for you to choose from. Okay. How's the 29th? 29th, sorry. All right, can we have a motion for Motion for public hearings on July 29th. Second. All right, motion and second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. Lance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. You have some recommendations for us? I do. I do. Six public hearings to be scheduled um, from the Planning Commission's June 2nd meeting. Um, most of the public hearings were 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 handled in a, in a very efficient manner. There was one where there was a certain, where there was a good deal of public input. So we expect that one will have a good deal of public input at, at the city council level as well. And we would recommend either July 29th or August 5th as uh, public hearing dates for these six items. Then we just do July 29th. 
July 29th. Yeah, you, we do. do you want these all on one night or do you want them? That, th that will be entirely up to you. We can, we, can do, we can split them up or we can take them all on one night. How many were on what we just approved on the 29th? What they was were, that one? They that were was, two, but they're two. administrative. They won't, yeah, okay. yeah, there won't be. I expect there. there to be very little um, input on those two zoning ordinance amendments from the public. Yeah. Mr. Taylor has already given us all his feedback. 29th. 29th. I'll make a motion we see it on for the 29th. Second. Motion and <clears throat> second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. All Thank right. You. Thank you, Mr. Palmley. <clears throat> All right, we'll move to um, on motion. We have fiscal year 22 hazard pay stipends. Ms. Tucker. Good evening. Um, council approved payment of $2,500 stipends to those considered essential personnel and 1500 to all other city employee full-time city employees as part of the FY22 budget. Um, the information I presented in my memo outlines the parameters for these payments. Um, first, I just want to point out that they will be treated like a one-time bonus for payroll and IRS uh, purposes. And we use the American Rescue Plan Act guidance to identify essential personnel so that if we are able to request reimbursement from the grant, those positions will line up with what the grant shows. And those factors used to determine the essential classification encompasses public safety, public health, and transit employees. And so those positions are detailed in the attachment to your communication. Um, in addition, the mayor will need to formally declare those positions as essential personnel for that grant. Um, other parameters include that employees must have been actively full-time employed on January 1 of this year and still employed on July 1. And then payroll will work to distribute those stipends, um, hopefully in August. And I'm happy to answer any questions. I just had one comment just to throw out here to you guys. Just uh, the, I was looking at the date frame and just kind of was wondering, I, I, you know, kind of why January 1st and really what got me looking at it, it was a Friday and it's a holiday. So there's really, you know, nobody would have started January 1st. And so it really kind of goes back to having to be in, um, employed last year. And I really didn't know, I couldn't just put it together in my mind what that had to do with you know, why we're giving the stipend people who work through the COVID scenario. And the only thing I could really come up with is like a March 15th date, which is when, you know, the mask mandate went away. The county who handles all of our health stuff said, you know, this is, you know, this is kind of the time that everything by that time was lifted. And I don't know, I just had this thing in my mind. I didn't like the, I don't like the way that they're doing the, the grant money, you know, they keep changing around. A lot of it doesn't seem to have anything to do with COVID. I just kind of was thinking for our purposes that we would line that up. And I tried to look back. I called Craig the other day about kind of some, you know, some dates of when did we open back City Hall and when do we do all that. And the only thing I could really feel like come up with that was a clean number was by the time the, the county health department, you know, that's not a date we're just sort of just picking because, you know, there's always going to be somebody who feels like they were just barely left out, right? Somebody who got hired January 10th versus December 30th. Um, but, you know, that March 15th was a number we didn't choose. That's the health department chose it. And by then, pretty much everything is kind of, we're through the, the difficult COVID period by then for sure. So. I was gonna throw it out there, maybe we make it March 15, so, it, so at least we can, we don't have to answer questions about why'd you choose this date, and there's really not an answer for it, to be honest. I mean, that's kind of where I was at with it. And I, I, I figured we, don't, we didn't hire all that many people between December 30th and... No, it was uh, about 25, about 25 people. So it'd be about 25 extra people would get it that way who, you know, technically were here during the mask mandate, which is essentially, because, you know, January 1st, it was a big spike in cases, even if you remember for that first part of January. So if that's why we're doing it, that's kind of what I thought would something we I could match up to. So it'd be 25 extra folks or whatever, that'd be 40, 50,000 bucks or something. Um, yeah. And hopefully we're going to be able to get that reimbursed. So I don't know, I, I, I could get behind that. Anybody got any major? That's about the only thing I had any questions about about it. You want to make that as a motion? 
If nobody else has any questions, I'll make a motion. We approve what you guys put in front of us with one amendment that with a starting work day would be pushed out to March 15th, which is a Monday. Starting work day or? Okay. To have been employed on March 15th. Yeah, you had to have been employed yeah, on yeah. July 1st. And still right. employed on July 1st, but you would have to have We're saying started actively by, working. Actively working, right. yeah. So by March 15th. Have a motion have a motion second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. You have the transit facility design amendment. Taylor. Yeah, isn't that called Willow? Good evening, Mayor and members of Council. Um, my name is Kayla Walker, and tonight I am representing staff to ask for approval of Amendment 1 to the Transit Facilities Design Contract. The transit project moved from the Main Street location to the Bridge Avenue New Salem site in August 2020. Due to the change in location, certain professional services that were in the original design agreement are no longer needed. Other changes included in this amendment are additional design services, updated labor and overhead rates from the initial 2018 agreement, and increasing the design to construction cost limit from the 2018 agreement's estimate of 9.2 to 11 million. Approval of the contract amendment with HGR uh, engineering will result in a deduct of $210,616, adjusting the contract amount to $1,385,594. The design contract funding breakdown is 80% federal, 10% state, and 10% local match with a local funding source from the fiscal year 2019 budget. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? If there are none, I'll move for approval. Second. Motion is second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mr. Mayor McFarland. Aye. We now have renovations and additions to Fire Rescue Station 3. Uh, the next item is a request for approval of the design agreement with CMH Architects in the amount of $41,600 for Fire Station 3 renovations. The scope of this project includes demolition of the existing unisex restroom and locker room and putting a small addition at the rear of the building to create a separate men's and women's uh, restroom and locker room space, a dedicated laundry and decon space, and a new storage room to be accessible from a rear patio area. The construction costs are preliminary uh, estimated at $250,000 and will be funded from the 2019 uh, loan proceeds for ADA improvements and fire station three renovations. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? All right, I'll move for approval. Second. Motion is second, Ms. Wright. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Thank you. All right. We now have taxiway A and ramp pavement rehabilitation design work authorization. Mr. Gerke. Mayor, members of the City Council, tonight I bring you a uh, design work authorization with design uh, barge design solutions for the amount of ninety-eight thousand seven hundred dollars which is 100 percent federally funded and this will address uh, re rehabilitation of various areas of pavement at the airport including taxiway alpha and ramp areas around some t-hangers any questions for mr kirky so moved second motion is second Ms. Wright. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. All right. We have approach design work authorization. Mr. Kirky. All right. The second uh, work authorization here is also with Barge, and it's for the amount of uh, $71,800. And this is for design work on the uh, south approach <laughs> for runway 36 uh, to make sure we maintain our safety and efficiency of the uh, runway and the approaches into the airport. Uh, again, this is 100% federally funded. I move for approval. Second. second. Motion is second. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. And 
continue with the Chad Gerke show. We have the annual airport rental rate adjustments. Well, Mayor, it looks like we're going to have some work ahead of us, so we might have to raise the rent a little bit. So uh, this is uh, gone before the airport commission, and uh, we're asking your approval to go 4% <coughs> increase in the various rental rates for hangars and tie downs and office space and things like that that we rent out at the airport. Mr. Gerke, yeah, if it was my understanding, there were there was not a rate increase last year, correct? That's correct. We we uh, made that adjustment because of the uh, <laughs> we were in the budget process right as COVID hit, and uh, we're uncertain what that would do to our customers. Okay. So moved. Second. Motion is second. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Anything else, Mr. Kirky? That's it. Thank you. All right. All right, we'll move to air packs and cylinders for the new 75-foot aerial ladder truck. Mr. Toombs. Good evening. How are y'all doing today? Good. good. Right. Be good. good. <laughs> <laughs> if already desires to purchase five air pack X3 Pro SCBAs and 10 air cylinders for a total of $40,778. The air packs and cylinders are for the new 75-foot aerial ladder truck, which should be completed. We got a new updated date for it. It's going to be October 2021 now. <clears throat> MFRD requires request approval to purchase these air packs and cylinders from MES through the Houston Galveston Area Council Corporate Purchasing Program. Corporate purchase is permitted by the state statute and the city purchasing code. If yeah. you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer. I'll move for approval. Second. Motion is second. Ms. Wright. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. All right. Well, we all moved item 33, the approval to purchase fire equipment from single source provider. Mr. Teams. MFRD desires to purchase task force tip nozzles, valves, gauges, et cetera, known as appliances. Total them $60,730. The equipment for the new 75 foot air truck, which should be completed, like I said, October 20, 20, 2021. And two new pumper trucks to be completed. September 2022. MFRD requests approval to purchase this equipment from EBS, GNW Diesel, as they are the primary strategic dealer for Task Force TIP products in the state of Tennessee. MFRD uses Task Force TIP nozzle and appliances on all apparatus we have. Different brands of nozzle and appliances are not inoperable with each other. Person Task Force TIP product will maintain inoperability within the department. MFRD has personnel that are trained and certified in repair Force tips, nozzles, and appliances. Be glad to answer any questions. Is there any? I move for approval. Second. Motion is second. Vice Mayor Skells Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Teams. All right, we now will move to the employment agreement for the city recorder, city treasurer, and the finance director, which is just one position. Exactly. <laughs> um, good evening, um, Mayor, members of council. Uh, on June 3rd, uh, city council voted unanimously to appoint Jennifer Brown as the city's new city recorder, city treasurer, and finance director, and uh, requested that I engage in contract negotiations uh, with Ms. Brown um, on an employment agreement. Uh, attached is a copy of the employment agreement that we negotiated uh, and that Ms. Brown has signed and I have approved as the form. It is, um, I recommend uh, its approval, but I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Any questions? Good contract, I move for approval. Second. Motion is second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Ms. Wright, how many more meetings do we have with you? One, I think. Mm. I think we're not going to meet July 8th. What? Is that right? I think we're still working on the date. Yeah, we're working on, on that. Whether it'll be the first oh, or the might. eighth. Okay, then maybe two. Okay. I'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we need to move to the purchase of a TK52 XP track 52 inch rotary mower. Sounds expensive. It is. No, I'm, it's, uh, it's actually cheaper than the one we're currently operating that's 17 years old. But, uh, Mayor, members of council, uh, I'm back again. I'm going to try to follow the, the Gherky show. But, 
Uh, we are, uh, on behalf of the street department, we're trying to seek approval to purchase a new uh, track ditch mower. Our current ditch mower is 17 years old. Uh, it's unreliable and it's really underpowered and it's unreliability uh, basically slows down our delivery of services. Uh, we're looking to purchase it out of stormwater funds. The new machine is tracked and it's remote control operated so it's much safer on our staff. They'll be able to stay away from the machine. It's, you know, the ditches that we mow, we mow those because they're not easily maintained by the typical commercial equipment or by homeowners. So it's very steep slopes. So it's safer for these guys to be out of the way of that machine while they're operating it. It's even got a little video camera on it so they can see exactly what's going on on that machine. But, uh, you know, this technology is actually being used by the Stones River National Battlefield down here. Uh, we saw them using it one day, went down there. One of the guys called me, he's like, man, you got to see this. And we went down there and they let us run it. I probably shouldn't have said that, but, uh, <laughs> but we talked to a few different uh, municipalities. <laughs> <laughs> what? Nobody heard. Yeah, Nobody heard. Nobody heard. No, I, not, not on our behalf, but on theirs. Our, <laughs> sacred, our sacred. But uh, but anyway, it's uh, it is less. Appreciate you doing that over at my house too. Uh, yeah, that was awesome. I appreciate that. That was nice. You probably shouldn't say that. <laughs> No, but uh, it is less to replace this or use this model than the one we've currently got. Um, we are looking for approval on this, and if you've got any further questions, uh, I'm here to answer any of them for you. I have I'm not going to make the motion. <laughs> I have a question on something I saw the other day. Yes, ma'am. Going down Haynes Drive, there were two trucks mowing, and they were in like a little cab, and they were sharp. I mean, hmm. they had the... Uh, blade extended about from here to Bill, and they were doing the uh, Haynes Drive. Yes, ma'am. And it, it was sharp. That, oh, thank you. That was our boom mower. We were probably cutting that guardrail back. Yes, yes. Right there around Tomahawk where it comes out. Yeah, I was very impressed. Well, thank you, ma'am. We appreciate that. You want to make a motion, madam? I, I will. I'll make second. Make a motion. I'll second. It, All right, we have a motion and a second. He hasn't All had right. this medicine. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I like him like that. <laughs> Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Um, you have some licensing. You have four different um, beer permits. Ms. Wright, are they all in order? They are all in order. We have uh, the hotel has finished all of their code inspections as well as the background uh, check, so it's ready to issue if you approve it tonight. <clears throat> the other three, no, I take that back. Also, the restaurant on Northwest Broad Street, they finished their building codes inspections this afternoon. So they're also ready to issue, they're a new owner. The other two do lack finishing building codes inspections. So we would not issue until that has been complete if you approve these tonight. Any questions? So moved. Second. Second. Motion and second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalant. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. We don't have any board and commission appointments. So we will have a few coming up here in the upcoming weeks. Um, any statements to be paid? No, sir. Any other business from staff? Uh, no, other than we are looking at our next meeting as to whether it will be the first. Generally, we don't meet on the first week of uh, July because of July 4th. However, that week is split the weekend july 4th weekend or holiday falls on the monday so the eighth would be a short week the first however may be vacation so we've sent a uh, survey out to council to get, respond to that and then we'll decide if we're going to meet on the first or the eighth could somebody tell us about celebration of the stars and give a little since we've got that opportunity to tell what's happening on sure Jill. Craig, do you want to go to the 8th? Um, <laughs> we're going to go to the 8th. Maybe Angela knows. Angela, about. would you like to tell us about Celebration Under Stars? <clears throat> uh, I'm going to be out on the 1st, so Madeline, can we have a meeting on the 1st? Madeline? If, if everyone's here on the 8th, we, we can push it to okay. the 8th, so we can see. Um, Angela can. So we're going to decide on the 8th then? Usually we don't meet the first week of July. That That's typically that first week we don't meet. Um, but we can meet on the eighth. If, if we we sent a survey, but if everybody's ready to say the eighth is good, then we'll yeah. we'll go with the eighth. Okay, so All right, we'll, we'll meet on the eighth. Angela, tell us about July the fourth. 
I was looking for a good cheat sheet for some times. Um, the 4th of July celebration will be on the 4th of July. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so we're doing that. Um, <laughs> right? There you go. Your governor. Thank you for the information. <laughs> hey, Angela, I will say this, and I, I know Mary Esther is not, uh, the mayor of Smyrna is not sure watching, but their celebration is not on July 4th. It's on July 2nd. Second. Right. So. Right. Um, so I will, um, I can follow up with some, some specific times, but we okay. will be doing the fireworks in the same location as last year over in the Gateway area, um, utilizing the <coughs> Station 4 um, space so that folks can walk, uh, can watch the show all in that downtown area. Middle Tennessee Electric is sponsoring this year and um, we are really looking forward to it. There will be music events and um, celebration all around. All right. Well, and we broadcast it on Channel 3 like we did. I'm sure that we will feature um, in some capacity. Yes, sir. Good. And we do appreciate Middle Tennessee Electric for their sponsorship this year. Yeah, and so if you're a resident, please um, check out the city website, the city Facebook page, um, city Twitter page, and that all of that will be posted on there. Thank you. So we're excited. And by the way, back to the last thing, if we're going to get, we're going to the 8th, that means we'll have early meeting on the 8th also, right? 530 meeting on the 8th. Public, for public comment, yeah. Public, public comment. Yeah, public comment meeting, yeah. All right. All right, any other business from staff? Any other business from the council? All right. Seeing none, everyone have a happy July 4th.